Good evening everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update for the Australian region tonight on Tuesday the 18th of February 2014. My name's Chris Nitzo and tonight, look, there's not too much to talk about cyclone wise but by goodness there's been a fair bit of rain around the Queensland region and we'll talk about the continuation and possibly expansion of that rainfall event will be the primary f uh, focus of our talk today. There is some cyclone signs, or sorry, there are some cyclone signs in the long term forecast that is in the 7 to 14 day period but really those signs are weak and erratic at the moment and so they're really not something we need to cover uh, as, a, as a matter of urgency at the moment. The monsoon has once again intensified across the north of Australia. You can see here the last 24 hours it really has got a kick along here uh, along the northern Australian region, particularly anywhere to the sort of uh, to the north of the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf, pushing eastwards into the Gulf of Carpentaria and then into northern northwestern Queensland, and we can see some very very heavy rainfall totals coming out of that in this uh, in this mass of thunderstorm activity that's been developing through the day as well as overnight. Last night you can see this big blob that developed right over the top of Townsville and gave the city some of its strongest and heaviest rainfall in two years with parts of the city going between two to 300 millimetres. In fact, over the 48-hour period, there are certain suburbs in Townsville that have received well over 300 millimetres, which is quite a phenomenal rainfall amount. We can see that that rain and cloud activity extends across most of Queensland. We can also see some fairly dry air across Northern Territory and Western Australia, keeping most of the rainfall in the northern sections of both of those states. We see one of the big flood warnings issued by the Bureau. We, we've recorded up to falls of 333 millimetres in the 24 hours to 9am this morning and since then a further 20 to 80 millimetres with some falls of 50 to 100 expected plus the possibility of higher falls up to 200 again overnight tonight and into tomorrow. So there's some pretty big rainfall totals possible in this region folks so there is a c chance at continuation of flooding over the northeast Queensland coast over the next 24 hours. Now that rain thankfully is not going to be limited to the Townsville region although it has been over the past sort of 24 hours it is going to push west throughout the rest of Queensland at least throughout the central and northern half of Queensland but also some, some of the southern inland regions will receive some rain as well. So for the week, folks, the rainfall totals over Queensland have been pretty awesome. Over most of the inland regions of Queensland, we've had 25 to 50 millimetres. Through most of inland Northern Territory, same deal, 25 to 50 with patches of the Northern Territory over 100 millimetres. We can see this really heavy rainfall on the Queensland coast, uh, on the northeast Queensland coast, just now starting to show up in that weekly total. We've got really good rain again in the Torres Strait as that monsoon just goes off its nut at the moment. It's just cranking out there at 25 to 30 knots. Uh, also the top of the Northern Territory or the tip of the Northern Territory and also the far northern Kimberley region of WA receiving a fair amount of rain over the past week. So there is a lot more to come and for those places I know some people have been saying it's patchy. It's not really. There's just some places that have been very unlucky to miss out. In general it's been fairly good widespread rainfall but there are patches that I have uh, have missed out so far particularly over the inland Queensland regions. Now that's going to change over the next week. Those patches should receive some fairly decent rainfall. If we take a look at just the past 24 hours we can also see outside of the Townsville region the actual Darwin area particularly just to the south of the city has received some really good rain in the past 24 hours as well so that's something not to be sneezed at either 100 to 200 millimeters in that region. So if we look at the pattern over the, the next 24 hours, we've got this inland trough and associated with it we've got an upper level trough and we've got this monsoon trough up here too. So what's ending up happening is these very, very moist northerly winds are feeding into this inland trough and so those winds are going to bring in a lot of, a lot of rainfall, particularly east of that trough line. Uh, a lot of shower and storm activity and possibly just extending into rain activity with the amount of moisture that's in the atmosphere. So the key here is this monsoon trough which is, as I say, it's, it's cranking out there. It's, it's really, really strong at the moment. Only in a certain section of Australia though, it's very strong. Then it sort of goes, uh, it sort of lapses out here and it lapses out to the west as well. So that's why you can see here the, the dotted line for the monsoon. Then it sort of 
just dies and then it comes back over the northern Australia, then it dies and then it comes back over the Solomons. So there are parts of the monsoon that aren't cranking, but the good news for Queensland farmers and grazers is the part that is cranking is right over the top of, or just to the north of, I should say, a uh, upper level and inland trough over Queensland. And so that is going to create a lot of moisture influx or, or a moisture advection into the area just to the east of the trough line. So what does that look like in terms of rainfall totals? Well, tomorrow we're just going to see a lot of that moisture streaming down. So we're just going to see generalised heavy, moderate to heavy falls of rain all across central, southern um, and, uh, and northern inland regions of Queensland. We're also going to continue to see this very active region of northeasterly convergent flow uh, where the winds are very moist and northeasterly and they back with height and create a perfect setup for some very heavy rain along the uh, central coast with Sundays and getting into the Herbert and Lower Burdekin regions. So we're going to see an enhanced area of rain there. We're going to see enhanced, enhanced and generalised rainfall across the inland regions of Queensland. We're also going to continue to see a very active phase here over the Northern Territory over the next 24 hours and the Torres Strait and Western Peninsula in those very, very strong northwesterly flow are going to receive a battering in terms of rainfall as well. On Thursday, we're going to see a centralised, uh, a more centralised region of very intense rainfall, and most of the model guidance is bullseyeing this central west district for that rainfall. Now you can see here, anywhere west of this region is going to see nothing, as there's some very dry air in behind this, um, circulated by a very strong high pressure system coming in behind the trough. So you can see here, though, if you are, if you do happen to be just east of that trough line, you are going to cop a battering. Of rainfall. We're going to see conditions easing off a little bit on the uh, central coast with Sunday's Herbert Lower Burdekin coastline as well on the Thursday where we're just going to see more generalised shower activity rather than the heavy moderate to heavy rainfall we've been seeing. Still some chances of some moderate to heavy falls on the central coast and with Sunday district at that point in time. The monsoon's still cranking on Thursday although it will start to weaken we're still going to see the northwestern peninsula coastline in for a battering in terms of rainfall. But you can see here that dry air really pushes up a long way north into the territory now and basically pushes almost all of the shower and storm activity off the coast or right on the uh, extreme northern coastal fringe. And same thing with the Kimberley here. We've seen most of the rainfall now exit this region and dry air penetrating really far northwards in behind the trough system. On Friday, we will see that rainfall extend westwards now in Queensland and the southwest and central west districts will be the recipients of that heavier stuff and we'll see rainfall becoming a little bit more patchy although still very very heavy in parts so once again you can see here these are 24 hour totals um, predicting uh, by some of the global computer models of 150 to 200 millimeters inland in 24 hours that is amazing amounts of rainfall uh, for for that particular for any region but for that particular region especially and the fact that there's generalized falls of 25 to 50 mils over 24 hours is also a uh, massive a massive um, positive for that region. Uh, but as, as I said, the good news is that that rain does start to push further to the west. So a lot of these places that have seen some patchy falls over the last few days will start to get more chance of rain as we head towards the weekend. Once again, we see only moderate falls now along the Herbert Burdekin coast. And we actually see a fairly big easing of, of rainfall in the central coast with Sundays as the ridge pushes in and starts to push a lot of that rainfall northwards into the North Tropical Coast and Tablelands region. And then on Saturday, we continue to see that uh, that pushing west of all that rainfall now into the NT, NT Queensland border regions. And we also see a fairly big easing of that rain. The monsoon trough starts to really weaken out by the weekend, so we don't get that extra inflow of moisture coming in from the tropics. So what we're left with is just the trigger of the inland trough system along Queensland. Uh, but we also see a big increase now in convergence around the uh, anywhere sort of north of about Ingham. We see this big increase in convergence, so we could see some very heavy falls from about Ingham to about Cooktown on the weekend as the southeasterlies kick in and the monsoon remains a feature, although it's not going to be as strong, we're still going to see some fairly heavy convergence between northwest, northeast and southeast winds in this region, so that will be the, become the focus of activity. Also, the dry air starts to abate over the Northern Territory on the weekend, so we start to see a, a 
increase again to more isolated to scattered showers and thunderstorms in that northern coastal fringe on the weekend as well. So folks, that's what the next four days have got in store for us. The four days after that, we're, we're going to see that rainfall, as I say, increase on the North Tropical Coast and Tablelands District and heading up to the East Peninsula. And we're going to see a lot of that rain from Queensland start to duck back to the west here into the Northern Territory. We're also going to see an increase in shower and storm activity generally over the Northern Territory and Kimberley in the four to eight day period. We'll definitely see an easing of rainfall in the Herbert Lower Burdekin and further to the south. Look, folks, if, you, if you're living in this region here in Queensland, you're not going to see too much out of this entire event. Uh, it's really more for people that are west of that uh, and north of that. So there are going to be folks to miss out here on, along the coastal fringe, but really this was never going to be an event that was ever going to really impact you guys. It was always going to be an event that was going to impact our farmers and grazers, and, and hopefully all things are going to plan at this point in time. We will see those rainfall totals as high as some of the models predicting and uh, fingers crossed that that comes off. All right, folks, so that's the end of our talk about the rainfall and where it's going to fall. Let's talk a little bit about cyclone potential. All right, so currently the MJO is intensifying and it's in the Coral Sea, Western Pacific region. Now, it's going to push further to the east at this point in time to be located into the Central Pacific by the start of March. And then it's going to, most of the model guidance suggests it's going to weaken off. So what that means is that we see elevated chances of above average rainfall, and we're seeing that already. We're going to see elevated chances of above average rainfall for the next uh, four, four to five days, and then as that MJO pushes further to the east, by about day six or seven, we're going to start to see a decrease in that rainfall, and relying more on uh, factors like that southeasterly convergence zone on the northeast Queensland coast, and, and less so on the monsoon trough as a trigger for a lot of the rain and storm activity. Now add to that though, we're also going to see a decrease in tropical cyclone potential as we head towards the early part of March and that MJO pushes into phase 8. Phase 8 means Australia doesn't do real well in terms of uh, cyclone potential or, um, or in terms of rainfall potential. So phase 6s and 7s, so if it stays in this phase and this phase, we tend to do pretty well in rainfall. So we can see here this is day 1, day 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We've got about 8 days here of the of the MJO being in a favourable position for us to continue to get decent enough rainfall. After that, things ease off considerably for the next week and probably the next couple of weeks after that. And if we look at the GFS model in comparison, we have a very similar MJO forecast from the GFS model. So we do see it intensifying very rapidly over the next day and then uh, really just continuing to push eastwards, progress eastwards. The, uh, the GEFS modelling suggests that the MJO will push east a little bit quicker than the Euro does, but really uh, the same result in the end, uh, about six or seven days of enhanced rainfall and weather for Australia, followed by a suppressed phase beginning in the start of week two. So most guidance has us looking at a low pressure system somewhere in the Gulf of Carpentaria, either now in the very near future or in the medium range. Look, and it, most of the guidance once again does not do, in fact all of the guidance that I've looked at in the past 24 hours really doesn't do much with it. It sort of pushes it westwards into the Northern Territory and over the top around the Kimberley region, but overall nothing much happens with it. And if we continue to track this through to Wednesday the 26th of Feb, we can see that area in the Gulf as we head towards uh, thir uh, as we head towards Friday, we see that that area pushes west into the Northern Territory here. We also see some cyclone signatures in the GEFS guidance on the in the Southwest Pacific, although they seem to be varied and a little bit confused. So the model guidance is not overly enthusiastic in this region uh, in terms of where things are going to happen. Although it is starting to suggest that something will happen out here and things don't look overly favorable for its development just yet, but it's too early to tell for certain. As we head towards the 1st of March, we continue to see the system, uh, whatever's in the Gulf, pushing westwards. And then uh, that sort of continues on to the 2nd of March, where it pushes westwards off the Kimberley. Once again, the model guidance, as I said, is confused at day 8, uh, day 7, 8 in the Coral Sea. So don't pay too much attention to this big blob pushing west towards the uh, Queensland coast. GFS has been doing that now for the past uh, month. It's been pushing coral sea cyclones westwards into the Queensland coast and so far the only one we've had done that we've had that 
that has done it has been Dylan, so I wouldn't be too concerned about the orange blobs just yet. But you can see here that as we head towards the early part of March, we are looking at the, the model guidance is looking at something off the Pilbara coastline at, at this stage, whether it's a cyclone or a low, not quite sure. And once again, don't pay too much attention to this, but just be aware that overall the GFS is developing something in the southwest Pacific, but not quite sure on what it's going to do with it yet. So it doesn't know whether it's going to develop it, push it southeast, or develop it, push it west, or just not develop it at all. So the, the guidance is very, uh, very much in the air as to what's happening there at that lead time. We can see in the Euro, the same thing, some sort of weak circulation, or probably already forming in the Gulf of Carpentaria, but really by uh, Sunday the 23rd, it, it has uh, that that Gulf of Carpentaria circulation in the southwest Gulf, very, very weak, nothing to be too concerned about, and really doesn't do much with it, washes it out over the NT in the medium term. And even as we head out to days, uh, days 9 and 10, we're only starting to just see a weak signature on day 9 off the, Kim off the Kimberley coastline here of a potentially very weak low pressure system on the Thursday the 27th and by day 10 we start to see a bit of a weak signature here in the southwest Pacific similar to what we saw in the GEFS guidance of a uh, very weak low developing out here or, or forming at least maybe not developing as such but forming out here in the southwest Pacific to the west of uh, about Vanuatu so folks there, there might be something there in the longer term but at this point in time, the, the next week uh, is not looking good cyclone development wise. But as I say, week to two weeks, even though the MJO seems to want to uh, duck out to phase eight and phase one, which are not very positive for Australia at all, there are some signs in some of the guidance, the ensemble guidance of new low pressure systems forming in the southwest Pacific and a new low forming near the Kimberley coastline. So we will need to track that. And our next update on uh, Friday, We'll, we'll probably have uh, some more to say about that if, that if that guidance starts to firm up. But at this point in time, folks, there's nothing to worry about and nothing on the long term that we can say with any concrete evidence is going to affect the coastline, as in cyclone-wise. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching tonight, and we do hope you cop a lot of that rain if you're in Queensland. There is a lot coming, um, but hopefully not too much to to create destruction and, and too much damage. So we hope that it does fill up some water tanks and then eventually the Northern Territory to regain some, some rainfall from Queensland as that trough pushes westwards over the weekend and into next week. Thanks very much for watching tonight, folks, and we'll talk again on Friday. Good night.